Hey guys, it's Landon Blake, and this is the third video in the little set of videos I'm doing that shows you how to process a simple static GNSS network. And if you remember in the last video, the second video in the set, we had processed our network holding this PBO slash cores point P176. We added that control coordinate and then ran our adjustment. So in this last video, I'll just take a few minutes and show you how I check the values of this network using the FGDC standard. So I've set up a spreadsheet to do that. And the way the spreadsheet works, you, you put in your record northings and eastings, and then you put in your measures, and it calculates the changes, and then your accuracy at the 95% level. And the way the FGDC standard reads... And it's a little, it's not a little confusing, it's a lot confusing. But my understanding of the standard is the way you verify your accuracy at the 95% confidence level for FGDC is you basically compare the values from two independent minimally constrained networks. And so I have two of these stations, P20, P222 and P226, are actually in another independent uh, minimally constrained network from a regional control network I do. So we're going to compare to those values. And I, I have P176 in here as the, uh, right now it's the seed point. And in order to get this math to work, we may, we may actually have to, actually we need to change that. So I like to have more than two points to compare, but, but right now we just have the two. So it would have been nice if, if I'd have had another one of those points in my network, but I don't. So what I'm going to do is we're going to go ahead and uh, open the the points uh, node here in the Project Explorer. <clears throat> and we just want to copy out the record coordinates for P222 and P226. So I'll pull open the properties and we'll grab these values and drop them in the spreadsheet. And then when we're done with that, we'll walk through the results. All right, so let's see what we got. So you can see right here, I've got a, a change in northing and change in easting. I've got about six tenths in the northing, four tenths in the easting, and I've got about two feet in the vertical. So let me explain why this is happening. And uh, that's why it's good to do the, uh, why it's a good idea to do the spreadsheet. So the reason this is happening is because in my other network, I held a different core station. So I held S cores S300 as my seed point. And you can see that there's a, as about a half a foot horizontal difference and a two foot difference in the, in the verticals for those two cores. And I suspect that that part of the reason I'm seeing this change in the, why I'm seeing this change in the vertical is, or change in the horizontal, sorry, is because I've got two uh, core stations that, that are on opposite sides of the San Andreas Fault. So S300's on the east side of the San Andreas Fault on the North American plate, and P222 is on the west side of the San Andreas Fault on the Pacific plate. And so there's been some movement there since the last time NGS went in and did an adjustment. Now the change in elevation you can see is about is about uh, two feet, one point nine feet, and I suspect that is um, because I held the published. So S three hundred is one of the few cores that has a published NAVD eighty eight elevation on it, shown to the nearest tenth of a foot, and that's what I held there. and And in this project, I actually calculated the NAVD eighty eight height uh, using the ellipsoid and the and the uh, geoid height shown on the data sheet. And you can see just because of the inaccuracies in the geoid model and the challenges that we have with elevation um, that there's just a two foot difference between those values. Uh, this is why NAVD88 values can be tricky. All right. So normally, so if I had held S300 in my network as my seed point, we would, we would probably not be seeing these differences. In fact, you know what I might do? I might go ahead and add that. I might add S300 and uh, rerun this and uh, and see uh, what differences we get. Okay, guys. So what we did is uh, 
I went into our network and I added uh, two core stations. I added S300 and ZOA2. Instead of holding P176 as a C point, I held SC300 and I reran the adjustment. I reran the process, the baselines, reran the loop closure, reran the adjustment. And so I want to show you the results. It's a little closer to what I expected now. And I realized I had a two foot bust on the vertical. That's part of the reason we were seeing the problems with the vertical. But you can see when I hold a core station as a seed point on the east side of the San Andreas Fault, now my values are, are right where I expect, just a few hundredths of a foot. Same thing with the elevations. So we got rid of that roughly half a tenth difference between the core stations on different sides of the San Andreas Fault, the Pacific Plate, and the North American Plate. And then if you come down here and you can see at 95%, I'm 2200 on the elevation, 1600 on the horizontal, and about 3 tenths on the 3D. That's from adjustment to adjustment, and that's at 2 sigma. That's the pretty good values. So I'm going to go ahead and save this now. And I save that in that same report folder. And it's saved as the minimally constrained coordinate comparison because I'm comparing coordinates from two different independent minimally constrained adjustments. Okay, so I got some good values there. I've got good, good, uh, feel like I've got good values on my control. Now I don't need these PBO stations in my working TBC project. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just come in here and focus on my local points. I'm going to select those. I'm going to go to export. And we're going to export a CSV file with those. And I like to put those in the export folder. And they get the job number, today's date. And then I like to call this uh, primary control. Okay, and then I'll go ahead and set up a working project. So I'm going to close this. And what I'll do is we'll come back into the job. Actually, I want to grab my template. So I'll copy my template, go back into the job folder here, survey TBC. I'm going to get rid of that empty working folder. We'll paste these. And I'm going to rename this with the job number slash working. I'm going to rename this template folder to working. It's got the very same folder structure. We'll drop this in the TBC, TBC file spot. Now this time I want to leave this feature code library because we'll need that when we process our raw data. We're not going to do that in this video, but then I want to delete that file. Then I'm going to go ahead and open this working project. Okay, so the working project is open now. It's an empty project, and what I want to do is import the control we just exported. So we'll go find that folder. Survey TBC Network Export. It'll find our file there. We'll hit the Import button. We want to make sure we tell it that it's in Northern Easting Elevation Code Control. And we want to go ahead and say Import. Okay, so now we've got a working TBC project with our points, primary control points from our static network, and we'll be ready to import our daily jobs that have our total station data, in this case, our scanning data. So I'm going to go ahead and save that project. And uh, just as a, to do good housekeeping, we'll come in here and we'll add the job number. And the start date. And let's see. There's usually a spot in here to put the vertical datum. 
So this is going to be Yeah, I don't know why. It's not letting me do that. I should be able to add the vertical datum there. We'll go ahead and put it in the general, in the comments. We'll say uh, vertical datum in AVD 88 per NGS cores S300. Hit OK. Hit save. And we got our working project ready to go. All right, guys. Thanks for watching.